Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are looking at the collection analysis and interpretation of data. Specifically in this module we are looking at how to do descriptive data analysis using R. And one of the aspects that we need to address is errors and we saw how to present data when we know what the errors are. And in this session we are going to learn how to do the analysis and uh, propagation of errors. How do we understand the error propagation? Um, so, this is about errors and their propagation. The first question is why are there errors in experiments, right? Uh, typically you will find that um, any experiment that you do is prone to errors and uncertainties. And the errors are of different types. Uh, first one is accidental error or a mistake. Uh, and that is not discussed in detail uh, in this course at all because they can be avoided. To avoid accidental error or mistakes, uh, one should do experiments carefully and uh, if in spite of that if mistakes happen, uh, one should discard the data and redo the experiment. And if you know that there is something that is not correct, you should not take the data at all. And you should periodically calibrate your equipments to make sure that the values that you are reading are actually the correct values. So, if the calibration does not give you right values, then you should again discard the data and recalibrate and redo the experiment. And it is also very important to repeat and replicate the experiments. Repetition means like we did in the case of copper conductivity for example, same sample you will make the measurement 20 different times. So, this is repetition, but replication means you will go through the entire process once more. Suppose you set 2.9 percent deformed sample, right? So, you have deformed the sample and in that sample if you take 2 or 3 different pieces and did the experiment 20 times on each one of them, this is repetition of the experiment. So, you have a sample which has gone undergone 3 percent deformation and you take several samples and each time you do lots of uh, uh, measurements so that your statistics is good. And if you did the several such repetitions, uh, then if uh, your experiment is repeatable and every time you are getting uh, the same mean and uh, similar standard deviation and so on, so you know that your experiment is okay. But replication means you have to repeat the entire process once more. Suppose you had taken the uh, sample, again you do a 3 percent deformation and then you take several such samples and then do several experiments. So, this is also very important and uh, repetition and uh, replication is uh, one way of avoiding accidental errors or mistakes. Then there could be systematic errors. This happens if your calibration is wrong or if you have not done calibration. Uh, so, you are measuring some quantity, but uh, it is systematically uh, more or less depending on how the calibration went. And it can also happen if you are not careful when you are doing experiments. And it can happen for example, in material science it is very common because there are impurities. And for example, the surface tension measurements uh, have been improving over the period because people are able to do, uh, um, people are able to remove impurities and get more and more purer materials and so the measurements have been improving. So, systematic errors uh, uh, can come because of the constraints. So, you have some material and it has some impurities and there is no way you can change it, then there is an error associated with it. And the most dangerous form of systematic error is uh, uh, some error because of some unknown reason. Uh, because it is unknown there is no way you can correct for it, but uh, one way that uh, one can learn about uh, such unknown reasons or correct for it is to reproduce the results in a completely different laboratory. Uh, in a different group for example, if they are also able to reproduce the results, then you can assume that uh, there might not be. Um, uh, errors of this uh, type, even though one cannot completely rule them out, 
uh, but at least if the experiment is reproducible in different parts uh, and in, in different conditions in different labs, one can assume that systematic errors are also not there. And the third type of error which is called random error or uncertainty is due to noise and uh, due to uh, precision of uh, equipments. So, this error cannot be avoided and it is also not possible to predict it. Repeated experiments and analysis will give some idea about these uncertainties. So, like we did for example, you take the same sample and everything is same, you do 20 measurements, you do not get the same number every time. This is because of a random uh, noise or there is some problem with the precision of the equipment. The equipment can only measure up to some precision, so you are getting numbers which are differing beyond that precision. So, there is a uh, joke about engineers uh, which says that you measure with a vernier caliper, mark with a chalk and cut with a saw. right? So, if you are planning to mark with a chalk or cut with a saw, you should not be measuring using um, a vernier caliper, you know just ruler will do. In other words, when you are doing experiments, you should know the different uh, errors that you are going to encounter. And so, if it is uh, not meaningful for you to measure something very, very accurately because you later know that something else is going to mar that accuracy or it is not going to give you to that accuracy, then you can save yourself lots of time, effort, money uh, by doing things only up to the required uh, accuracy and precision. So, this is very, very important. And, um, and the next thing about errors is that let us say that you have some random errors or uncertainty in one of the quantities, right? But these errors actually propagate through your calculations to other quantities. Uh, the skin depth formula that we discussed earlier, I mentioned at the end of that session that uh, the formula is the delta is 664 by square root of f mu r sigma. Uh, we can assume that f and mu r are known and they do not have any error and they have this some given number which might not be true, but at least for the moment let us assume that they are given f is uh, 60 kilohertz and mu r is uh, 0 0.999994. If so, then any error that is there in sigma or uncertainty that is there in sigma measurement will actually also affect the delta measurement. Uh, let us say for argument's sake that uh, sigma is 100 is what we took, but it has an error bar the error bar is plus or minus 2.5. Let us say that it can lie anywhere between 97.5 and 102.5. What is the uncertainty that you will get in delta because you have uncertainty in the value of sigma? This is a question that one can ask and with this being a very simple case, it can also be answered very easily. So, let us simplify the expression a little bit. So, use the values of uh, uh, f and mu r and uh, you get an expression which is 2.71. So, how do we get that? Let us do that um, R can also be used as a calculator. So, we want to get uh, um, uh, 664 divided by square root of 60,000 and 99994, right? So, you get uh, 2.71085 and uh, that is what is uh, given here. Um, sorry. So, 2.71077 and that is the value that is given here. So, that is uh, divided by root sigma is the expression for delta. Now, the value of uh, sigma is reported as 100. So, if you calculate delta for 100, you get 0.27 or it is 0.3 millimeter. Now, you can use the other extreme values that you have. Let us say that um, you have values like 97.5 and 102.5. You can again substitute these values in this expression and you find that value turns out to be 0.2745 and 0.2677. In other words, they also happen to be 0.3 millimeters, right? We are not going to measure uh, beyond this accuracy, let us say, then all the three values happen to be 0.3. So, the error within the accuracy to which we calculate uh, delta becomes negligible. However, if we are calculating delta to some fourth or fifth decimal place, 
let us say we were measuring in uh, microns for example, then uh, these uh, different values will actually have errors. And so using this uh, very straightforward method, I mean we have a range, we just substitute for the min uh, and the max, uh, the extreme values. And so we know what are the extreme values that uh, delta itself can take. So we know the error is uh, in this range, uh, the, the, the value lies in this range. So you can know the what the error is. Now there is also another way of calculating the same quantity. Uh, now the sigma of delta that is the standard deviation in delta, so there are two sigmas, so one has to be careful. Um, the, the left side is the standard deviation that is obtained by taking the partial derivative of delta with respect to the conductivity sigma and multiplying by the uncertainty in the uh, conductivity. So if you take the, and, and it is modulus, so we are going to take only the positive value. So if you take this 2.710777 divided by square root of sigma and uh, you take the derivative, then it is uh, sigma to the power minus half on which you are taking derivative. So you will get uh, minus uh, by minus half and uh, sigma to the power 3 by 2 in the denominator. And so that is the expression that is uh, written here and you can see that uh, this is the expression. And now you know what is the sigma that you are using which is uh, 100 and you know what is the delta sigma that is uh, uh, 2.5 and uh, the, the plus or minus 2.5. So you can put these values and you will get uh, the error and that is the same 0 0.007 is what uh, we calculated even from the range earlier and you are getting the same value here also. There is one more way of uh, doing um, uncertainty propagation that is using simulations. And using simulations is a more generic approach. Uh, it can be used even when functional relations uh, between the result and uh, several other variables are not known. And there is a library called propagate uh, and uh, so you can use that to solve any of the complex problems of uh, uncertainty propagation. And we are going to do a few examples of that later. Uh, but for now, I want to take the same simple case, you know, it is a very, very simple case. Uh, can we just use propagate and find out how the error propagation happens? And that is what we want to do now. So let us go to R and let us do the, uh, so first we have to, so we have to get the library propagate. Okay, so the library is in place. Now we can get this command. Okay, so what is this uh, uh, command? This is the error that propagation we are calculating and that is using the expression 2.71 by square root of x. And for doing error propagation, we have to give either the mean and standard deviation or some data generated uh, using a simulation. And this uh, error propagation itself is going to be done using uh, Monte Carlo simulation and we want to look at the uh, resultant values. So you can see that uh, this analysis also, so it is much more complicated. So we will come back again and uh, take a re-look at this. So the mean is again 0.27 and uh, so Monte Carlo simulation also gives you 0.27 and uh, the uncertainty happens to be 0 0.0064 um, which is similar to 0 0.007 that we uh, calculated earlier, right. So what is this uh, propagate? And so you can use the help You can see that this is what we use for error propagation. You have to give the expression and it is clear what the expression is. And you also have to give some data and that is what we generated uh, here, right. We used uh, normal distribution, uh, 100 numbers with mean 100 and standard deviation 2.5 because those are the parameters that we assumed. Sigma had a standard deviation of 2.5 and a mean of 100 is what we assumed. 
and so you have to generate data of that type. So, so this is explained here in the our documentation. So, probably it is clearer if we use R and So, you can see that propagate requires the expression and it also requires the data. It should be either a data frame or a matrix. It can contain the means and standard deviations and degrees of freedom and degrees of freedom is optional and or you can have a sampled data generated from any of ours distributions. right? And that is what we have done. We have actually generated a sample data from the R's distributions and uh, so this, this command that we have here is basically generates from the, uh, the distribution R norm. So, it generates 100 data points uh, with this mean and with this standard deviation and it turns it into a data frame and the data frame has to be named appropriately. It should be called the x, you know, this labeling is important that is how it knows that this is the x. So, in other words, instead of doing experiments because we know that this is the mean, this is the standard deviation, on computer we are generating pseudo data and using that data into this formula we are finding what is the range in which the delta lies. And using those values, we are calculating how much is the error that we found in the delta. So, that is what it is done and the result is given and result is given in greater detail. So, some of these things we will come back and take a look at later. So, of course, you can um, also change. Okay. So, let us say um, that we change the R norm to be 10. What do you see? Um, and you can change it to be 1000 and what do you see? Okay. So, so as you uh, increase the, the number of data points, um, there is no change in these values, it still remains 0 0.27 uh, and the, the uncertainty still remains at 0 0.007. So, so, you can see. So, this is a way of doing the analysis. Um, so, let us go back. So, so, simulations is a more generic approach and propagate library allows that to us to do that. Now, beyond this simple case, we looked at a very, very simple case. right? So, there is just an expression that connects delta to sigma and you can calculate error directly or using the formula which is based on the partial derivative or you can even do some simple uh, generation of data uh, using a Monte Carlo simulation then you can find out how the error propagates. But what happens if uncertainty is a result of two or more independent variables? Let us say you have a function or you have a variable, uh, its value depends on some three different uh, variables and those variables have their own uncertainties. And how does this calculated parameter, uh, its error depend on the errors on those independent quantities. And sometimes uh, let us say a particular quantity f depends on x, y and z, but the uncertainties in x, y and z might not be independent. They might also be related to each other. So, if there is an interdependence on the uncertainty of these quantities, how does it affect the uncertainty on the quantity that we are trying to calculate? Right? And sometimes you might not even know the functional relationship between uh, the quantity that you are trying to calculate and the uh, quantities on which it depends on, uh, even though you know what is the error on those uh, variables. So, in those cases, uh, how do you deal with and understand the error propagation or calculate the uncertainty? or uh, do the uncertainty propagation analysis. 
So that is the uh, part of the uh, descriptive data analysis using R that we will do and that will complete this uh, module on uh, descriptive data analysis using R. So we will do that in the following parts, thank you.